Okay, so we've highlighted these three reasons, and uh, Hassan, you were talking about solutions. But aren't there already some effective solutions? Why aren't we seeing the companies leverage these solutions and go online? They don't know about them. So they, they don't necessarily know about all these solutions out there. You'd be surprised. Okay, you know? so then so, is it just purely an education problem? Uh, totally. Totally. And uh, I mean, I want to address a small point that you raised I believe, two years ago at the first ArabNet. There was a whole, um, again, uh, question on, on the same panel we had uh, two years ago. They were talking about it's expensive to ship online. And what we have done also from our side to enable this is we've actually formulated an entire straight, uh, rate structure just for e-commerce. And this is another thing that we've done, which is totally subsidized by RMX, to, to help people, you know, with the, you know, with the least worries possible about costs, etc., to get online. So, I mean, I think the only missing component for this to really totally gel is a, a simple payment gateway solution. Okay. okay, which brings us back to the discussions earlier today exactly. about the... And, and there's no gateway solution, we're not worried. We have COD, as people have seen. Yes. So, uh, um, so, from your experience, tell us about what kinds of businesses you're seeing coming online. Any of you, right? What, what are the types of businesses that are the most, uh, most challenging to convince? What are the types of businesses that are most ready from an industry perspective? Okay, from, uh, in general, from our point of view, I mean, we are seeing a lot of pure players, okay, being there that are quite successful and so on. What kind, sorry? Uh, pure players. I mean, so all the e-commerce companies are already there, okay? okay. Uh, most of the challenges that we are seeing are mainly coming from, uh, I would say, consumer goods companies because they are still find, trying to find the right way to engage with users. So Can you be more specific about consumer good companies? Yeah, companies, I mean, that in general, uh, FMCG companies. So okay. uh, local the, companies the, the, that are manufacturing. The PNG companies of this world, okay, but not PNG specifically, right. okay, but companies that are in this specific sector. Okay. So they are still trying to find the right way, let's say, to engage with users. So I will say that companies that cannot lead uh, and generate specific leads from the web are the ones that are, uh, let's say, the most challenging to, to be convinced about having a digital presence. So all companies that can generate leads from e-commerce, from finance, from uh, tech and so on, they're already there. But automotive and FMCG is where we are seeing uh, most of the challenges. And that's because you can't convert into sales. It's much more difficult to understand what's the research online versus offline effect. And that's why we are doing a lot of studies, I mean, in the Western world, we are trying to bring similar studies here in the region to really show the effect of people that are researching online and then going offline and purchasing. Why this is important? Because today we have seen that more than 50% of the goods okay, that are being bought are being researched online uh, because people really are changing the way they are, uh, let's say, uh, buying products. I mean, before they were going offline, checking for uh, products, checking for offers, and so on. Today, all this process is happening online. And then when they made up their mind, they already know what they want. They just go offline and close the deal. So this is something that in general is happening, and we need to continue to demonstrate and there is this effect, and that's why for them it's important to have this online presence. Okay, interesting. Uh, Michael, you as a somewhat between offline and online business, how, it, I mean, uh, do you feel like, uh, what are your next steps that you're going to be doing online? What are the challenges that prevent you from going more online? Or is this a decision that you've made that you believe traditional media are uh, more important for you to reach your target audience? Okay, no, definitely that's a very important point to be uh, present online. Um, I mean, we are more or less online from the first day because we are uh, on TV, okay? Everybody can see us. We are covered in all Middle East, uh, North Africa through the satellite. But the online um, strategy is very important for us. We started 2009 an e-commerce platform, and we've seen um, immense growth potential. We have nowadays about 15% per month in growth on the e-commerce. Although, I must say on the other hand, that e-commerce for us is just supporting our main business. Like the, the, the revenue we do in e-commerce is just below 10% of our overall revenue that we do. But as I said, we can see the growth potential and the way that it, it uh, starts to get accepted in the region. Um, I think if you want to be a successful company, you have to be online, definitely. And 
this is not only with an e-commerce platform, but also as um, Alfonso mentioned, the, the YouTube is very important here in the region. Um, for us, for example, it was uh, very essential to have all the shows, uh, all the videos accessible on YouTube because we have seen that a lot of people, especially also from Saudi Arabia, um, they are on the YouTube platform. They watch videos, they want to have access, they want to review the product, um, they want to leave comments. So that is very important for us. And we also see that it's, it's, it's going in a second direction also to be um, um, active in the mobile, mobile m-commerce. Um, to see that, 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 that we integrated with applications and that we use the interactivity tools that are available now also to integrate Twitter. All this uh, social media uh, is very important for us. But again, as I say, it's just supporting our main business, which is still TV. So can you, can you give us a breakdown of the numbers just as a summary? You were saying uh, less than 10% of your business comes online through online channels. Yes, that's right. And then the rest of it is coming through telephones? Yeah, exactly. The rest is really a telephone business, basically. Yes, whatever they see on TV, they can order it. We deliver it, and this is 90% of the but business. But what's the growth rate of, of the different businesses? Are they the same? Do you see offline, uh, sorry, online growing faster? Yeah, definitely faster. We have in 2011, we had a growth rate of about 60%. Like 60? From the 60, 60 on the TV. Um, and expect for 2012, uh, about 50%. But as I said, um, online, it's 15% per month. So then you see that over the year is much, much more, of course. So what is it over the, over the year? I'm not going to do the compounded math. It's over 150%, right? Maybe yes, definitely. Over 200%, right? 15% yeah. per month. So we're talking about a difference in growth rate, uh, offline growth rate somewhere around 50 60%, online growth rate of about 200%. Yes. That's pretty big, right? So uh, we're looking at a gap that's changing very rapidly, right? The 10% is not going to be 10% for very long. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we're going into that action. Excellent. So uh, do you feel that you're currently, uh, do you have a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis your uh, online competitors? Or do you feel like you have an advantage? No, I would say for, from my perspective now, from the business model, we have an advantage in, 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 in different ways. One way definitely is the, the reach at the moment. I mean, we heard some impressive numbers now of the presentation rate of internet, but this was focusing, I think, on UAE and then Saudi uh, is coming now. But when you see the TV, is accessible to, uh, on Nile side, about 80% of the whole population in Middle East, North Africa. And it's very simple to participate in that business model. But the only thing you need is a TV and a phone. So you just pick up your phone and everybody knows how to use a TV and a phone. So that's very easy. Or especially for our target audience, which is also a lot different from the e-commerce user. Um, the, Can the you give us a sense of the demographics? Who yeah. are the demographics that are calling in? Who are the demographics that are yeah. uh, buying online? Oh, the core, the core audience for us on TV is definitely about the, the female viewer. It's about 70% of all of the um, customers is, is female, 25 to 45 years old, um, Arabic speaking, married with kids. This is our core target audience. And when you go to the, to the online, it's definitely much, much lower and more the technical first, first uh, user um, who's interested in this um, kind of technology, obviously. But we are trying to tap in to this as well, also by offering different kind of products. We're focusing at the moment still a lot on beauty, cosmetics, kitchenware, but we're going also into electronics, um, cameras, laptops, uh, all these sort of things that interest also the younger people. Okay, excellent. Uh, a question for you, Hassan. Uh, if you could share with us a little bit about, right, you run Shop and Ship as well as the other e-commerce programs within Amex. Yes. So, and Shop and Ship, if, if we, how many people here know Shop and Ship? Right? How many people, uh, keep your hands up, oh, high up. How many people actually have a Shop and Ship account if you do keep your hand up? Okay, that's a pretty, uh, pretty high penetration rate. Um, so, oh, yeah, sorry, Con, have a, have a drink with that. Um, uh, that. So, that's a pretty high penetration rate. So, we understand that Shop and Ship is buying from abroad, and, uh, or UK, United States and China. versus uh, most of the other services that you have are really about buying locally or the, the partnerships that you have with e-commerce platforms here locally. Yeah. Could you give us a sense of are people buying from global retailers or are they buying from regional retailers? You've got both. You actually have both but uh, I believe the shop and ship customer has a totally different or is looking for a different value proposition than necessarily the e-commerce uh, sites in this region. If they're value driven totally then yes they might consider the region because of the, you know, what's, with the flash deal size, et cetera, which is fantastic. 
But a lot of the customers that we have are trying to get their hands on something that's not available in the market. Uh, can, uh, more choices, variety, and convenience to do this. And sometimes, yes, it is uh, look for the best deal out there. I mean, I, I have a great example. These, these pair of shades that I, I found uh, at the uh, Mall of the Emirates uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were priced for 1,400 dirhams. And I managed to try them on. They looked good. I was happy with them. Within two hours, I was online in the U.S. I had bought them for 700 dirhams. So, so if, we, <laughs> if we had to break it down into percentages, what percentage do you think of, your, of the total number is coming from a, or is sales abroad versus sales regionally? I think Iyad demonstrated the figures earlier today, and they oh, were okay. like uh, Maybe I missed the detail. Quite can you can you give it to us again? I Sorry. think what we pushed two million shipments for shop and ship last year. Sorry. Two million. Okay. And about uh, six hundred thousand for for the regional e-commerce. So. So still much bigger of people buying from outside the region. Yes. Okay. There's a lot more out there for them to look at. There's a lot more websites. A lot more retailers are online. Uh, okay. You know, so it goes without saying. You have. Do you see a change in the growth rates, like I asked Michael? Is the growth rate for the region much higher than for the global purchases, or are they roughly similar? The growth is quite consistent throughout. Okay. Yeah. So you don't see people like leaning more towards regional stuff because of the boom in e-commerce? Because we, I do feel like we're seeing a boom in e-commerce right now. Extremely. No, no. And it, it's uh, certainly in the right direction. And I believe you have the best of both worlds. I mean, you as a customer, as a consumer, you have to have the right to make that choice. And the more the choices are out there, you know, the more... You know, the more that you can make your own decisions on purchases. So I think it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. So it sounds like the, the advice from you for some peop, someone who is considering starting a, a new company is maybe to provide products that are not available currently in the market. Sure. Be different. Be, you know, right. you know, even a selection be, of products. And, you know, have a niche, uh, you know, in, in whatever you're offering. You don't have to go out there and sell the world. Be extremely focused on your product. You know, uh, give something that uh, people want that they can't get. Or give them a great value, give them uh, excellent customer service, give them fantastic logistics, give them uh, all the choices you can.